So let us ask the Gen Z, what is his perspective on this? Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, we already have hundreds of social media, you know, and I don't see in schools getting taught you know, how to negotiate or how to propose an ideology. Yeah. Make a high pitch sound. Is that a high pitch sound? <clears throat> Sorry, we won't give you that. We are absolutely thrilled by the love and appreciation we received for our debut episode. And that inspired us to call another remarkable guest to our podcast. He is a 10th grader and has a passion for thriller and suspense literature. He enjoys discussing dark comedy and tragedy. And he also loves creating quirky captions for his Instagram post. His love for karate adds another layer to his dynamic personality. He is known for his commitment, enthusiasm and warmth, alongside his witty and cheerful demeanor. Join us on Act Active Kids Gen Z with our remarkable guest, Rigved Rajesh. Thank you for having me here. Welcome, Rigved. How do you feel? A little bit nervous and excited. Great. Talk to me about your story. What's your story? How does it feel like growing up? Where did you grow up? How, tell, tell me from the beginning. Well, even though I was born and brought up here, I originally hear from Kerala. And my parents are doing, are both in finance sectors and so my brother, but I'm planning to go in the same direction. And I currently am studying in our own boys, Sharjah. And I'd say it's a good school too, so. <laughs> Great. Talk to me a little bit about um, any moment of your life, especially while growing up, that changed the way you think now. So tell me those anecdotes. I think the main moment that really shaped me into who I am is uh, the times I had with my grandmother and her sad passing. She was the one who took care of me a lot every time I came to India. She, you know, fed me and she cared for me every single second. If I had, if my father was screaming at me, just talk to her. If I wanted a little money for the stove, just talk to her. And then a few la years later, she sadly had passed on. So I think, yeah, that is the one moment that really changed me. So what are those lessons that you got during, you know, her time with you that in still inspire you to make decisions or you know make any choices if, of your life there was one quote she used to say i'm a little bit paraphrasing but she used to say no matter how much life throws you down you should always stand back up and that has really inspired me especially through my younger ages when i was little in a dark time so yes great so how does school feel like for a 10th grader now the tenth is board board year, so it's little <laughs> um, tough and it's very scary at this point. But like my grandmother used to say, I'm going to push through it. That's great. So, talking to a Gen Z from your perspective, how do you think living with millennial parents is feels like? So I I'm a millennial myself, and my daughter is a Gen Z. So we we often have difference of opinion mostly I would say and that's fine because we, we are coming from two different worlds and but yet we have to learn to compromise and learn from each other and learn from our mistakes and uh, move ahead how, how is it for you to uh, grow up with you know you and of course your brother coming from the same generation and then you know living with your parents well, actually, my parents are also type of Gen Z at this point. You know, every once in a while, we all gather up and we talk and we play cards and board games and everything, you know. And they're very chill with the fact that how me and my brother act, you know. And But they are still, you know, you can see the millennium in them. Uh, they talk about how we must stay in our own zone. We must make sure that we don't do anything wrong. You know, they even though like they act like us, 
they still know their role as parents so yeah that's the one very amazing thing about my uh, my parents great so do you see the same thing around your friends uh, that you interact with that parents have to learn to give space to children of who are coming from another generation yes i do see it you know um my par- more my parents know most of my friends personally you know because they have always thought that if i can if i can connect with them they can connect with them and we all like it's like a practically a family at this point you know so great so rigvid while growing up i considered my parents as my role models so that was they were someone who we look up to for as you know as in an idol of strong belief system values and ethics and the discipline that they taught us probably because we lived in a generation where there were few role models that we could look up to but in your world you have barrage of people who are you are surrounded by and then you have another few distractions as well from the outside world um that you you know you'd like to follow them or emulate them or you know you you love to be like them so amidst all the chaos and distraction that the gen z's are surrounded by do you still consider your parents as your role models yes definitely you know because both of them are working and they work extremely hard for my brother and i's satisfaction and so we can have a m- amazing plat- uh, plate of food on our table you know and i see my dad is a public speaker my mom she sings and she cooks amazing food you know i've gotten both qualities from them i guess but yes i still i believe that they are my main role models everything i do i see them so rigwit we talked about parenting which is the most difficult thing to do what do you think the millennial parents mostly worry about i think one we one thing we could see is technology addiction right every day we open we wake up we take our phone see we brush our teeth with this one we when we go, go out we are using the phone itself right uh, that is one point and secondly i think about how they should get proper job up they should get proper jobs which not only give them proper financial stability but emotional and happiness you know mm. which is something that i don't think millennials have seen in themselves right. before right so you mean the children who are growing up now are surrounded by so many career choices yes, yes. and uh, which career choice is the best for their choice for their child and how that is going to help them shape their career and their future is what is also making keeping the parents up in the night yes yes <laughs> okay yes. great So Rigwit we were talking about how you consider your parents as role models and of course you think your gen z community also might consider majority of them as th- they are role models however i want you to tell me few things or three things that pop in your head about things that you don't agree with your parents coming from a different background different world they have their own set experiences to share with you and to keep reminding you about are there any points like that which you don't agree with well there is one thing that comes up to my mind which is the fact that they don't exactly believe in technology right they don't believe it might be the future and all but i believe especially with advancements to ai that it will surely create a more safer future for us right so why do you think your parents uh disagree to the fact that technology will change the game one well, it's all because of how they had grown up and what type of jobs we had back in the days right they had more hard working labor and compared to today's standards we use technology every single day here right, right. so i think that's the main reason they don't believe it right i it an anecdote comes to my mind about what i disagree with my parents was they always taught us hard work is the way to success yes and uh, i kind of disagree with them because now you see we have to work smartly to get yes. work done yes. and like you said technology is going to change the game and that's one thing why we are able to work smartly 
but back then they didn't have that advantage yes that is why they had no option but to work hard and you know get the the survival uh, things that they need for their family so certainly i agree with you when people come coming from di- different background that shapes their experiences and their mindset we wait you t- told us that technology is one way how uh, the world is going to change for better and do you think you gen z's are prepared for the world out there and your school has a major role to play there so do you think schools are preparing children for the future world yes and no i believe that with the knowledge we gain we can make it we can make it to the uh, our future we can make our future and but we are not taught what our taxes are how to deal with them we are not taught how to use technology to make certain advancements in life and we are not taught all these so i think there are good and bad to both sides so you are trying to say that some skill based learning is what is missing in school so give me an example of how your school prepares you all for the 21st century world any specific uh, areas where you feel your school is focusing let's say communication skills program debates or some other skill management courses one thing i like about my school is they have many clubs a variety of them about i believe 20 and one of them includes debate club which you can practice your persuasion and practice your verbal skills so yes there is that is one way that they teach us but still there are many improvements yet to be made so i remember i reading a research which was by the forbes magazine they've come up with the top five soft skills which are important in 2024 and let me tell you those five top skills uh, those are uh, strategic thinking persuasion presentation skills negotiation and critical thinking these are the five skills that are relevant and important predominantly in the in the time that we are in now so what do you think uh, about the schools do you think they are predominantly focusing on in enhancing or honing these skills among children or among the gen z's or do you think we still is lot of work still to be done i think like you had said there's a lot to lot of work to be done because i see many children who can't go up on stage you know and i don't see in schools you getting taught how to negotiate or how to propose a ideology yeah so that's why i think we must learn ourselves especially with many new apps like youtube or chat gpt we can learn different different things and we must learn ourselves you know because these are life skills that y- you cannot teach someone they have to learn through themselves true true and these are learnable skills all the soft skills are learnable so you're trying to say that the s- students the children have to either learn by themselves thanks to the technological advancement that we are living in now or the school and the parents have to be partners in helping children hone these skills i think both of them you know parents play an important role and majority of our life is taken through school right so we must we all should come and unite at one point right and we must we school teaches you knowledge parents teaches you life lessons and you have to learn yourself how to live life so i think all three of them are important at this point awesome are there any specific evidences of how the school your school is trying to enrich uh, or hone these skills in children yes there is every year once every year we have a play that we conduct right and we gather, we go to each and every class and we talk to children and whoever are interested they come out and they speak and we choose who is best at speaking and yeah i get, yeah we would conduct an amazing play in the class you must have seen every child's speaking journey or confident journey is different how does your school prepare these children who are largely neglected or who have less opportunities in school to speak 
how do how do you think your school gives them the opportunities do you think this play that you talked about is one way how they get to be seen to be heard to be noticed there is one that is one way if they have the confidence to go up but in case they don't like the school has many different clubs and they encourage each and every student to join just for their own betterment yeah so school does play a, a key role in enhancing the students confidence skills yes so what's your journey of confidence were you always this confident well no i wasn't really this confident at the time as as i was small but uh, my father used to take me to these club meetings of toastmasters in which i slowly gained confidence to speak on table topics which is an impromptu speaking session and i used to once in a while just go up on stage and get on topic and speak about it and then later on i joined active kids and yeah i guess that's my journey awesome you talked about technology we talked about technology and we don't talk about social media then it's going to be a, a mistake or a crime so let's talk a little bit about say, say social media and what is uh, the perspective of a gen z uh, on you know the the booming time that we are living in with social media keeping us more and more connected and yet people so many people are disconnected from the world so what is your perspective on social media i think it's the greatest thing to happen and the worst thing to happen social media has definitely connected us all together yeah. but one thing i have seen is it has all disconnected us physically you know i've seen best friends who chat every single day but once they're at school and they meet each other no talking is you know so i think social media is not only for talking and enjoy entertainment it can be also used for work right there are different things like linkedin right and it's definitely important that we have social media but there is definitely some cons to it true true so like you said social media is 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 important in today's world for whether it's growing our business staying connected with our family or friends or posting content but how does it affect people like you i'll give you why i'll tell you an example i want to share with you an interesting blog that i read recently it was written uh, by a gen z who i follow closely he writes that he hates social media and when i went ahead and read he says i i do not like social media because it makes me feel inferior of myself every time i i check a reel i feel i'm less attractive i'm less popular and uh, i i'm less successful in life so he went on a social media detoxification and he did not he deleted all his social media apps for about a month and then he saw how it changed him as a person and this the the description that he wrote about himself about how it changed his mindset how he became a calmer person how he learned to listen to people rather than being busy on the phone all the time how he spends time with himself you know these changes were were you know it actually made me realize that he's right i mean it's absolutely right how social media has changed our mindset and also our lives and our relationships with people has it also happened with you any point where you felt inferior of yourself to me personally no but i have seen many of my close friends really losing it you know they have felt that they are less than people especially many of our clo- many friends of mine they post pictures of themselves next to f- na- fancy cars at fancy restaurants and other people think that that's their everyday life when you realize that maybe it's their fa- family anniversary and they don't even put it in the caption you know they'll just say everyday life hashtag this one okay. you know and that's the one thing i've seen it truly hurts to see this you know because we must realize all of us are humans we all have emotions right so if we don't say if we see all these we get we store it in our mind 
and at night uh, day you, at a night you can't sleep you think and you think and you come to think about all these right so right. you slowly feel bad for yourself you start hating yourself that why did i why was i born here why was i not born there why is my life like this why is why is their life like that and they slowly hate themselves so i think that is one thing everyone should realize and everyone should change about themselves so what is the process that you follow to not feel inferior of yourself what what could be those three things that pops in your mind now well there is one thing only that really comes to my mind which is any time i feel like this i look at that real five times just to realize that that could be just one day of this you know once in every once in a blue moon they might be doing this type of fancy things and we must realize how precious our own lives are you know with our family with our fr- loved ones and with our friends we we should cherish that own moment we should not think oh they have a lamborghini if how, yeah you should re- realize that our lives are perfect right right so that's the gratitude uh, that that people should have for the lives that they have been blessed with or the life that they are creating for themselves so do you think gratitude is one way how we can take the benefits of social media while not hating it because it has several benefits which uh, we have but at the same time being gra- grateful for our lives so does that mean that gen z's growing up in this world are more grateful than we millennials no i don't think so they are more grateful compared to like i mean i i have i've always wanted to be happy so i've always been grateful and i have ips indian parents in bromna so i've always <laughs> could you repeat it for our for our guests yeah i've always had i've i was born with ips indian parents in bromna so i've always had to be grateful or else i will you know right. yeah so uh, that is one thing about me but mm, people don't take that to fact you know they don't they're not very grateful especially gen z's and millenn i believe there is a small part of that is to blame with millennials because many of them have spoiled their kids spoiled them to a point that where if gen z's don't do a single uh, if millennials don't get them something or if gen z's are not able to do so, a specific thing then they'll start losing it they'll i have seen videos of where a parent takes the child's phone for not even 10 minutes and then the child breaks the tv or something you know they lose it but i have most of my friends are very grateful for what they have you know and so i think that's the one division between gen z's true so your perspective is yes they are certainly grateful for what they have however there are large, large, yeah large, large, majority. large majority of them who still who are getting addicted yeah than taking the advantage of social media platforms yes. right so i want to get this get you get your creative juices flowing and i want to ask you if there was a new social media which could be created what would that social media platform look like for the gen z's instagram tiktok reddit we already have hundreds of social media covering a span of hundreds of different uses for each yeah why do we need another one already people are really tired and lazing around due to these due to using social media adding another one is like adding fuel to fire and another thing is i think we've covered all bases in the social media world what more is there to add maybe one might you know lose its feeling and another one might come along but it won't really change anything so you we do not need any social media new social media platforms yes, coming yes, up yes all right so in that case we keep to the same social media platforms and make it safer for our gen z's to scroll through because they also love social media so gen z's i have want to tell you an interesting research that i i came across so a, re- a recent study says that 3 out of 4 managers find gen z's to be the most difficult generation to work with so let us ask the gen z what is his perspective on this i don't think they're 
uh, I don't think they're very hard to work with. There are some conditions they would like, you know, they want to have a job which is flexible, you know, which makes pretty good pay. And some even say they want free food with their uh, work, right? So I think they're not, if you give them what they want, they'll, they're the most creative and hardworking people. Now, since we are talking about work life and uh, smart career choices, it is said that the average tenure of a millennial is five years. That means they stay at a job and they do not wish to hop at least minimum of five years. Hmm. And for the Gen Zs, it's astonishing, but just two years or less. What's your perspective on that? I believe this is called job hopping. Correct. Right. Yeah. Job hopping is really good because one thing about Gen Zs is they love to explore, right? They want to explore as many fields of workforce they can do and they want to know what is right for them. You know, and that comes to the second point, I believe, is the flexibility, right? If they find something that they love, they will stick to it. You know, there are certain job opportunities which they do hybrid, right? Which means they can sometimes work offline, sometimes work online. And there are certain conditions that really pull these Gen Zs out. And yes, I believe that's my points. In a lot of jobs, people leave their jobs because of uh, more pressure so do you think they also leave the job because of increasing work stress or uh, you know feeling depressed all of these things do you think mental well-being also is one factor yes that's one an another good thing about uh, gen z's they are very very focused on mental well-being and mental improvement Right, So they make sure that if in case they don't feel comfortable with this, they, they have the opportunity to leave that job and go for something better. Right. So when, when you compare it with the millennials, you think uh, millennials are more, they, they are more secure and uh, the Gen Zs are, are insecure. That is the reason why they, they look for different opportunities? Well, yes and no. Well, because if in if they're in a part of the world, if they're in their own world, if they're feeling that they're not really given the appreciation that they need, right? They can, they should, they understand that why should I work here? You know, why should I suffer for something that I'm not even given proper achievement? Right. Proper right. Uh, achievement, recognition. Recognition for. Yes. Correct. Correct. So this generation is smarter than the millennials. Because they know that it's the credit that they deserve. So they're very clear on what they want from a job. And that is also the reason why they love to stick to one particular job where they are not experiencing experiencing burnout. And at the same time, they are also getting recognized for their work. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Rigwait, for this engaging and insightful conversation. I got a better view of how to handle a Gen Z who is at home <laughs> and also how to better address uh, things around because Gen Z comprises a large amount of population. So yeah. we certainly needed uh, people like you to tell and tell us about your experiences and your perspective. So thank you for making this conversation so interesting and insightful. Thank you. Are you ready for the last segment of our podcast? Am I? Okay, yeah, yeah. Fine. So this podcast, this uh, last segment is the rapid fire. There are going to be three rounds of this rapid fire. In each round, you're going to have going to be asked few questions, which has to be answered rapidly. If you're going to pause, think, you're out. Right? So don't you think we should quiz our Gen Z on something which he has to say quite rapidly? Okay? Nah. So if he loses, he has to get to do something for us okay 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 so if this rapid fire we're going to have three rounds and the questions will be asked to you are you ready yeah I've been sure wonderful let's begin round one without stopping and rapidly start texting or talking texting favorite day of the week Sunday favorite city in US besides the one you live in US um, Washington DC Nickname your parents used to call you? Lucky. Last song you downloaded? 
would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to talk to animals every language in the world favorite holiday christmas how long does it take for you to get ready 2 minutes scale of 1 to 10 how good of a singer are you 1 at what age do you want to retire 60 is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers Yes. <laughs> okay. So, okay. All right. So round one is over. He's done pretty well. He just missed one question. So that's a good one. Let's go to the second one. Are you ready for the second one? Yeah. Okay. Look at the camera and say yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Scale of one to ten, how good are you at keeping secrets? Ten. Dawn or dusk? Dawn. If you could travel back in time, what period would you go to? 1860s. Do you snore? Yes. Place you most want to travel? El Las Vegas. Favorite junk food? Burgers. Favorite childhood favorite TV show? Rick and Morty. Favorite season? Season 4. Favorite season? Summer oh, winter. So that Oh, fair is yeah, winter. <laughs> Make a high pitch sound. Is that a high pitch sound? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we won't give you that. Okay. Do you ever post inspirational quotes on social media? Never. <laughs> okay. So that ends round two with our guest, and I think we should not give him the high pitch sound because that wasn't a high pitch sound at all. I think he restrained his voice quite a bit. So now we go to round three, and then we decide if he should be getting he if he is the winner or not. Now, last few questions. Favorite ice cream ice cream flavor? Chocolate chip. Say a word in Spanish. Hola. Say a word in Hindi. Namaste. Say a word in Arabic. Assalamu alaikum. Do you believe in fate? Yes. Favorite number? Nine. What does a person need need to be a to be happy? Happiness. What is the best age? Nineteen. Okay, that's all. That's all, Rigvid. I we loved your quirky responses, though. He performed pretty well, so I think he is the winner of our rapid fire. So congratulations for that. Thank you. Your hamper will be sent to you at home. <laughs> <laughs> Great conversation. Thank you very much, Rigvid. It was fun. It was insightful, and it was amazing to talk to you. I think this is going. To, this is a memorable experience for me. Same. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Rigvid. <laughs> <laughs>